Hey, good people. I hope you're having a great day today. I wanted to hop on and do a very, very quick video out of Genesis chapter four. And I want to read you guys verses one through kind of eight probably in this. And this is such a simple concept this morning, but I really do want to reiterate it to all of us today. Okay. We're going to be talking about Cain and Abel, a story you guys are probably very, very familiar with. So let's just dive right into some scripture and we'll get into this today. Uh, Genesis four, verse one. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it also came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and it's desirous for you, but you should rule over it. All right. Um, and then we find out later that Cain actually killed Abel later on, you know, out of jealousy, spite, whatever emotions were going on concerning the situation. So there's a few things that I really want to look at, okay? So Cain, it says that Cain brought an offering to the Lord, but it doesn't go into a lot of detail of what that was, right? It says specifically Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Now remember Cain what he did as a profession, we learned earlier in this, is it says he was a tiller of the ground. In other words, he worked the land, right? That was what um, his livelihood was. And so in today's time, what we do is we give money in terms of like an offering. We will give actual money, right? But back in the day, you know, they, they based it on their profession a lot of the time. What they gave to the Lord is an offering, right? Notice the difference between what Cain versus what Abel gave. It says Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock. So first of all, that represents first fruits. Abel didn't give God his leftovers. He gave him like, that meant that, let me put this in today's verbiage. So the moment that paycheck hit his account, he immediately sowed to God before he went to the grocery store, before he bought extra stuff, before he paid the bills, that tithe and offering was immediately in the bank account. You see the difference in what they did? The other thing that this says is of the flock and of their fat. I'm going to read you that whole sentence again that Abel um, submitted to God because I think it's important. It says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of the fat. That fat, you guys, represents overflow. It represents excess, right? And so I think it's interesting. The Bible talks about how it's critical for us to give not only tithes, but it says tithes and offerings. Amen? So this is exactly what Abel did. Not only did he present that percentage to God first that was his. Remember, when we tithe, that's not our money. That is God's money that we're returning. You know, this is something that's important that I have a long teaching that I do on this and it makes people angry, but I don't care because if you want to see your finances blessed, we got to talk about this stuff. Amen. You know, when God asks us for that 10% of our income, that tithe portion of our income, I want to tell you guys something. That does, it never belongs to us to begin with. It says that spe very specifically in scripture that the tithe belongs to the Lord. Okay, so let's say that a friend loaned you, um, you know, a shirt to wear or whatever, you know, and they said, okay, you know, at the first of the month, I want that shirt back. None of us would blink an eye at returning that shirt because we knew that it was not our property to begin with. So when the Bible tells us the tithe belongs to the Lord, we shouldn't get offended when God asks us to give it back as a first fruit, you know, in our daily lives, because it's not ours to begin with. We've got to start thinking about stewarding our finances differently if you want to live in the blessing. Amen. So the purpose of tithing does multiple things. Number one, it shows God your faith and it shows him that I trust you. I don't trust this paycheck. I trust you, God, but also it keeps us from letting money become an idol in our personal lives. Amen. You know, and God tells us in scripture that, you know, he blesses the rest of our income when we surrender that 10% to him. Amen. I didn't intend for this to hop into this kind of a teaching today, but apparently we need it. So let's keep going. And it said, and of their fat, 
that's the other thing that Abel submitted. So the first thing was he submitted firstborn, a.k.a. first fruits. The very first part of what he did, he submitted to the Lord. The second thing is the fat represented overflow. Amen. So that represented the offerings, right? So a bare minimum is 10%, but then we give offerings. We give into that overflow. And, you know, so a, that's what pleased God is because Abel did the right thing. He did what, according to Scripture, is correct. Amen. So let's keep going. It says, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Listen to me, you guys. Oh, doggies. Sadly. Hi, doggy. Anyway, I'm pet sitting for some friends right now. Um, they'll get a kick out of this video if they see it. Anyway, uh, here's the deal, you guys. It says, um, the Lord said specifically to Cain, why are you angry? So in other words, God doesn't want our leftovers, you guys. The difference between Cain and Abel is Cain was like, well, I've got some stuff left over. It'll work. And so he just kind of filled the quota. Abel was like, no, God, you're first in my life. Before I give to anything else, I'm going to give to you you know and then abel also gave overflow whereas cain just did the bare minimum you guys this is the difference between religion versus relationship right you know abel truly wanted to give whereas cain did it just because it's what's supposed to be done right and he didn't give him the best part of what he had he gave him kind of those leftovers okay um but there's one more phrase that I really wanted to focus on today that's kind of, you know, what God was showing me this morning. And he said, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desires for you, but you should rule over it. So here's the deal. God was talking to Cain. Cain got upset because God favored Abel in what he did. And he looked right back at Cain and he said, you know what? You're getting upset over this stuff. But if you do the right thing, I'm not a respecter of persons, Cain. I will give you the same honor and favor that your brother Abel received. All you got to do is do the right thing. It's that simple. And that's a word for some of you guys today. You've been getting angry at people getting promoted ahead of you. You've been getting angry at favor on people's life. And God's saying, you know what? Just do the right thing. And you will also be accepted. It's not very complicated. And I know that's such a simple concept for us to kind of wrap our brain around this morning. But it's critical, you guys. Um, <clears throat> so here's the deal. It says, if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. It's a choice to rule over sin in our flesh and our lives because our flesh is going to cry out a lot of the time and it's going to be a strong desire, you know, and God's saying, you know, this isn't what always happens, but you should rule over it. In other words, you've always got a choice in every single interaction throughout our day. We have a choice. Are we going to let sin win or are we going to walk by the spirit? Amen. So here's the deal, you guys, all of that to say, God rewards those who put him first and who put their trust in him. God is all about faith, you guys. And so our tithes and our offerings are an example of faith in action. Amen. You know, it's not enough to just talk about faith. We've got to act on our faith. Amen. You know, I think about stories from the Bible of people that God used mightily and their faith was always tested for a season. You know, I also want to say this to encourage you guys not to give up because a lot of times you're doing the right stuff. You know, you are serving God faithfully in different areas of your life and a lot of times it'll look worse before it gets better. Hello. You know, think about people like Moses. Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years before God called him to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen. 40 years, you know, think about people like Joseph. Joseph went through unfair after unfair after unfair situation for years before he was promoted to be second in command in terms of the kingdom, you know. And so a lot of times, you guys, it's not necessarily that you've done something wrong. It's just that your promo time for promotion isn't there yet. And God's preparing your character. And a lot of times the enemy loves to go crazy in those seasons, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you've been wrong. But all of that to say, if just like in this passage that we just read, God said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? If you keep doing the right thing, you guys, your promotion is coming. If you keep putting God first, you may be in a stormy season right now, but God's saying, I accept you today. You know, I am not prejudiced one person versus another. So instead of getting, you know, upset when somebody receives their promotion before you, get excited because God just said in scripture, if you do well, will you not be accepted? He has incredible plans for your life. Incredible things that he wants to do. And just because you're in a stormy season, the devil will try to tell you God's abandoned you. The devil will try to tell you God has given up on you. And he will try to make sure 
that you are feeling like God is just not for you. But here's the truth, you guys. We reap what we sow. And if you keep sowing good seed, you're going to reap a harvest. That's a spiritual law. Just like there are natural laws, like the law of gravity, for example. If I pick up a pen and if I drop it, it's going to fall to the ground because there's a law of gravity, right? There's a spiritual law of sowing and reaping. If you sow good seed, you will eventually reap a good harvest, ladies and gents. But the devil's job is in the in-between. The devil's job is in that waiting season where what he does is he comes in and he tries to get you to doubt the promise. He tries to get you to, you know, think that, oh, God's not going to honor that. You did that years ago. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. And so he'll come in and he'll try to get you feeling like that, you guys. But you've got to immediately come right back at the devil and go, no, I'm standing on scripture. God said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? God has plans for my life to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me a hope hope in a future. I have sowed good seed and therefore I expect to see a good harvest and it may not be in the timing that I expect, but it's going to happen. Listen to me, you guys. Seed produces at different times and at different rates. So for example, I can go and plant one seed and it may pop out of the ground instantly. Amen. Or I may go and plant another seed and it may take quite a while before I see it popping out of the soil. Right? But here's the deal, you guys. The seed will come forth. Amen. Because God's the one watering it and he is the master gardener in our personal lives. Amen. And so it's important, you guys, that we listen and that we take that into consideration and that we don't give up in those waiting seasons. That's when the devil tries to get you discouraged and he tries to tell you all of this stuff that you've done, it doesn't matter. But I want to tell you guys today that it matters more than you know, and God is still on your side. So don't give up today. If you do right, you're going to be accepted. Amen. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.